the new Saints Row has finally released, and as I'm sure you already know, it's a complete disaster. It is shockingly bad, unbelievably bad, honestly. Even though I'm sure we all saw it coming from the very first trailer, Saints Woke has been its nickname for the last year. And of course, I'm just here to confirm, yeah, it's as terrible as everyone else has already said. Now, unlike everyone else, I didn't get a review key until launch day. I had already bought a copy because I figured I wouldn't get a key, so don't worry, it surely didn't affect my opinion of this game. And without further ado, let's just get into it. This game doesn't really deserve a proper intro. It honestly doesn't even deserve a real structured review. So this one might be a bit of a mess of tangents, but trust me, I'll get the point across. The whole purpose of this review is just to try and get into the game's very numerous flaws in detail. Let's just start right off with the story concept. The Saints, this time around, are a group of broke college students who turn to crime to pay off their fucking student loans. Now this is played off as a joke because at no point in the game do you actually have to pay off student loans unless that's the conclusion to the story because yes, I will be right up front about this. No, I didn't finish the game and I guarantee fucking to you none of the other reviewers finished it either. I'm just the only guy who's transparent enough to tell you that. So if for whatever reason that makes my opinion worthless to you, well then fuck off. I put in 15 hours, that's more than enough for this pile of trash. The boss, aka your player character, is the only one of the group who actually has a job, that being working for a paramilitary group obviously based off of Blackwater. Well, I mean, we're about to be shot at, so I figured it couldn't hurt to brush up on our healthcare package. If you weren't paying attention to the briefing, I don't think you'll live long enough for your copay to matter. So I should be reviewing the life insurance policy. You know, our job interview has a 5% mortality rate. Statistically, the odds were low that you would die before we hired you, but I allowed myself to be an optimist. Your parents should have treated you better. Yours should have treated you worse. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent writing. Contrary to your colleagues' Very demeanor, funny. this is- You engage in what is quite possibly one of the worst tutorial missions of all time, where you're taken to some Wild West town that looks like a fucking movie set, and you shoot a bunch of cartel members, I guess. I don't think they even make it clear, and even if they do, I don't fucking care. And immediately you can tell the shooting is god awful. Now at first I played this game on hard, and it is very clear to me that they didn't play test this game on hard, so I actually lowered the difficulty eventually, which I really try hard not to do when I play games. But you can tell immediately on hard there's a fucking problem. Three headshots. Three headshots to kill a basic enemy on hard. Come on. This is a basic ass, extremely generic third person shooter, and most of the gameplay in this game is shooting enemies. You have to make sure that that shooting is at least slightly fun, but it's not. It's embarrassingly bad, mediocre, boring, insert adjective here, it's bad. Now, there is a weapon upgrade system, which makes this a bit more tolerable, but you actually have to unlock weapon upgrades with your player level, because yes, there's levels, there's skills, there's perks. Why couldn't this just be like a tiny bit realistic? Why do you have to shove in these generic RPG mechanics that really add nothing? You can't even throw a fucking grenade. Throwing a grenade is one of the skills. And guess what? Grenades suck too. Even on normal difficulty, if they explode at someone's feet, they don't die. Oh yeah, remember how in Saints Row 3 and 4 you had those special goofy melee takedowns that were kind of funny, but, you know, got a little bit repetitive, but you didn't have to use them, they were just a special melee attack. Well now, for this game, the developers have made this a core part of the gameplay loop. The melee takedown is on an ultimate charge meter straight out of Overwatch, which speaking of which, this whole fucking first mission has an Overwatch vibe to it with how goofy everything looks. And these melee takedowns actually recover a chunk of your health because instead of just having proper regenerating health, your health is now segmented into bars and you can only regenerate an incomplete bar. You know, you've played games like this before. And so to get another bar back, 
you have to do a melee kill. And now the melee kills are super fucking long, dude. Some of them are more than five seconds long. That might not sound like a lot, but when you're just frozen in place and enemies are just staring at you, they can't even hurt you, they don't even try and shoot at you when you're in this animation. And even though there's like 20 different ones, because it's completely random, sometimes they'll repeat over and over again, and it's just, it's not funny. Nothing in this game is fucking funny. You'll understand that pretty soon. There are melee weapons, but even those aren't satisfying to use at all. They all swing super slow, and it takes like three hits to kill a basic fucking enemy. And again, on normal, I know this is such a generic, like, game reviewer phrase, but what were they thinking? Seriously, you can't convince me anybody playtested this shit. They didn't. Nothing about this game is fun. Fucking Saints Row 2, a headshot is a kill. How did we move so far backward? Anyway, eventually you get to the end of the mission. You experience one of the worst Ludo narrative dissonance moments I've seen in a long time. Mr. Nuwali, you're coming with me. You really think you have what it takes to bring me in? I mean... Yeah? Hey, where you fucking going? I said you're coming with me. Perhaps I don't respect your authority. Just shoot you him. Respect this. You said one foot on those stairs. Holy shit. We just no, shot like a hundred people. What, why are they acting like we're a rookie who doesn't know what they're doing? We just killed like a hundred men in the tutorial. This doesn't make Give any up, sense. Nawali. Then another stupid insane action sequence happens and you get to meet your roommates for the first time. Eli is the generic black nerd stereotype that we've had since Community, which obviously Donald Glover has been trying to escape ever since. And he's a complete pussy and he has the proportions of a woman or femboy or something. Then we have Nina, who is the token girl of the group, a getaway driver, even though she never actually does, like, any driving, at least as far as I played. Even in the missions where you're helping her, you're doing the fucking driving, so she might as well be useless. And she works for Los Panteros, one of the criminal gang factions. Then we have Kevin, who I guess is the face of the group. He's a DJ for the Idols Collective, which are a bunch of anarchists who are apparently also trained with guns and likely a metaphor for upper middle class liberals or something, which actually gets into an interesting point. Believe it or not, this game is not nearly as woke as we were led to believe. I think it was purely done as a marketing stunt and actually in development, they purposely sanitized the game of any possible political commentary or humor or edginess of any kind, which is why this game is so fucking bland. I honestly wish it was more woke so I would have more shit to make fun of. Instead, I can just point out how horrifically unfunny this game is. Hey man, if you want a $300 waffle maker, you can buy it with the exposure the idols pay you in. Don't expect us to chip in. I've told you before, the idols are trying to build a post-capitalist society where money is not a concept. Yeah? Then why don't you go run off and join uh. the I'm into showering. Are you gonna help me get the waffle maker or not? As an investor, I don't like wasting money. You're wearing a fucking bow tie. <sighs> okay, I will throw in 20 bucks for a waffle maker. Nina? Um, good for 10? Who helped you move your forged paintings last month? Fine, 15. What sort of waffle maker can I get for 35 bucks? Uh, presumably one that makes fucking waffles? <laughs> hey, the wave slave is back. How was your first day? Were the other mercenaries nice to you? You fucks. So we might as well talk about the character creator. The shills fucking lied to you. They said that there would be more character creation options at launch, despite the fact that Volition never said this, as far as I'm aware. And so, lo and behold, when I finally load up my pre-made Abby Armstrong, any similarities to a character from The Last of Us 2 are purely coincidental. I look through the customization options and, lo and behold, it's pretty much all the same shit. If anything was added, it was probably maybe a few more faces to the list of templates. But even then, I didn't really recognize any that weren't already in the boss creator. So how is it overall? I think it's decent. But there is one major problem, that being the art style of the game itself. Everything in this game is fucking ugly. 
There's a lot of people, myself included, who thought, yeah, this pretty much just looks like Saints Row 3 again. But honestly, it's actually worse, or at least the facial proportions are. Again, it sort of has like that Fortnite vibe, but even uglier, where everybody has comically giant eyes and a weird plastic look to them. Even if you slide down the eye size slider to negative 100, it still looks uncanny. As for like body type and musculature, you can't choose height, you can't choose limb proportions, and if you're asking oh, what game let you do that, fucking Dragon's Dogma, most underrated game of all time. But at least it's on par with Saints Row 3 where you can pick to be muscular or skinny or fat, or a mixture of the three. And you can also add prosthetic limbs, I guess if you care about that. The hairstyles are okay, but like I said back in that edgy, age-restricted video, yet you can't even get basic haircuts that people have, like a normal-ass fucking ponytail like Abby has. You can also pick the voice for your character, but unfortunately they remove the ability to pitch shift it up and down. Which makes no sense to me, that would be super easy. I can do that in fucking Audacity or Premiere right now. How much effort could it have possibly been to put that in this game? It just shows you how many corners were cut and how low the budget was. Basically, it's only good for making really over-the-top characters, especially ugly characters, it's very good at that. But if you're hoping to make yourself or some kind of idealized version of yourself, you're gonna be disappointed. So instead, I just used Abby for the first half of my playtime and then Giga Chad for the second half. And so you go out into the sandbox, and so let's talk about that. Probably the only good thing about it is that it is far more visually diverse and aesthetically pleasing than Stillwater or Steelport. Stillwater was obviously going for a little bit more of a realistic city setting, and Steelport was kind of a mixture of realistic and over the top. But Santo Aleso is much more fantasy than reality, it sort of has a little bit of a Vegas vibe, a little bit of an Austin, Texas vibe, a little bit of an LA vibe. It's just kind of a mishmash of all these different cities. And so at the very least, it kind of looks cool, but that's really the only good thing I can say about it. Side hustles and ventures are a big staple of the Saints Row gameplay loop, and that's back in this game, but really almost all of them suck. Just let me know if any of these sound good to you. Leave a bad Yelp review, which is you just fight waves of enemies. Wingsuit onto buildings and destroy antennas. Now you might think the wingsuit part sounds good, but wingsuiting just feels like shit. This isn't just cause, where half of the fucking development time probably went into making the wingsuit feel awesome. No, this is very lazily done. It takes absolutely no skill whatsoever to use the wingsuit, it does exactly what you want it to do. And it's just kind of goofy and over the top, you can take down enemies from mid-air at fucking Mach 2. Which would be funny if the rest of the game wasn't so painfully unfunny. But yeah, you're just throwing explosives onto antennas and you just shoot a handful of enemies, and you have a very generous time limit. There's one where it's basically an on-rail shooter segment where you shoot enemies from the passenger seat or from the roof of the car. Yes, that's the thing they added. You can lay on the roof of a car to use your bigger guns, but it makes you a bigger target. Believe it or not, this side hustle is the reason I bumped down to normal. On hard, they kill you in about three seconds of being exposed on the roof. And then when you swap to get back in the car, they destroy your fucking vehicle as you're getting in. I'm not going to complain about this any further. The point is, if for whatever godforsaken reason you buy this game, just don't fucking play it on hard, okay? You'll thank me later. Another side activity is you fly in a helicopter with a big magnet, pick up whatever package you're supposed to get, and then fly to another place. And that's the whole thing. And there are dozens of these across the map. This shit gets more clustered than your average Ubisoft game. I mean, honestly, I felt bad about shitting on Ubisoft so heavily after playing this, because this puts any Ubisoft game to shame and how goddamn repetitive and boring all the sandbox activities are. And of course, there's like 10 different collectibles. I'm not even gonna go into that. Pretty much all of them suck. A dumpster? What? Jackpot! 
God damn, the Saints have gotten desperate. <laughs> so after completing some of these side missions and no doubt buying some new weapons and possibly upgrading them if you made it to level 5 at this point, and probably went around to some of the clothing stores and noticed how limited the options are. I couldn't even find a fucking dress. I went to like six different stores and some of them are just clothing stalls that have like four or five options. So again, it just bloats the map further. You have to drive around more and there's only like four different fast travel points on the map or some shit like that. Everything sucks, dude. Everything sucks. So anyway, you get back to the main missions. Your boss continues working for Marshall. You do this big Mad Max homage mission, which again would have been cool if the shooting wasn't so bad. And you get promoted. And so you go to this fancy museum and you have to escort some codex or something for your boss. Of course, the museum gets attacked and you end up losing the codex and you get fired. And you get yet another potentially funny scene, but they just fuck up the delivery. Oh, come the fuck on. Stupid refurbished appliances. Figures. Because your buddies Eli and Kevin get stuck in a shootout at one of the idols' parties, you bail them out, and on the escape, you listen to a fucking motivational tape or podcast or recording or whatever, and your boss decides to start your own gang because apparently your crew is so skilled that you shouldn't work for anybody, right? We have no reason to believe these guys are actually skilled in any way. We haven't really seen them do anything impressive, but whatever, okay. So you find an old abandoned church, clear it out in an actually okay mission, and your boss decides to call this gang the Saints. So honestly, by this point in the game, I was already starting to get pretty burnt out. I was pushing myself through this even just for like those four hours on the stream, and now I'm at like the seven hour mark, and the game really hasn't gotten any better. Upgrading your guns does make the shooting a little bit more tolerable, but when a fucking shotgun blast to the face is a coin flip on whether or not it's actually a kill. At fucking point blank range, by the way. This is another pet peeve I have with third person shooters. Why are the guns so fucking inaccurate, dude? You can't even make a shot out with a rifle to 50 yards. It's not fun to shoot and have your bullets not hit the target because of some arbitrary weapon spread system. And then there's an excessive amount of bloom and recoil. Oh my god. I didn't even really talk about the skill or perk system in depth. The perks you actually have to buy slots for and you unlock perks by doing challenges. The perks don't really seem powerful enough to matter. As for the skills, like I said before, this is what you have instead of grenades. Each of them is just a magical power you can pull out your ass, whether it be proximity mines, frag grenades, a flaming fist, which seems to be pretty buggy. I actually got soft locked using this. Even loading didn't restore controls to my character. I couldn't shoot, I couldn't jump, couldn't dodge roll, and had to fucking restart the game. The most useful one is the one you get right at the start of the game, where you can just grab any enemy shove a grenade into their pants and throw them and they explode. And it even works against the armored enemies, which are even bigger bullet sponges than the normal enemies. So I use that thing all the time. The only other one that seemed to be pretty good I got right near the end of my playtime was a sniper rifle. That seemed to actually be a one-hit kill, which gives it use on its own. And that's the last time I'm gonna mention the shooting. It doesn't get any better than this, trust me. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to talk about the driving. This is a GTA clone after all. Well, um, it's terrible. So again, no surprises there, and I'm not exactly like a Forza or Gran Turismo fan, but I did spend a lot of time in GTA Online. Make of that what you will. This feels a lot more like Watch Dogs driving, that kind of arcadey shit where your car feels more like a battering ram than having any sort of realistic physics. And drifting isn't even drifting at all, it's more like a magical power slide that never stops. On the one hand, it makes driving incredibly easy, 
even on mouse and keyboard, it controls just fine, especially compared to a lot of older games. On the other hand, it's just completely brain dead. The fact that you can just sideswipe cars with the press of a button, have this infinite drift, your vehicles have a fuck ton of health even when they're not upgraded at all. The vehicle customization seemed pretty good, but I honestly have no idea if they actually expanded on this from previous games. Because the driving itself sucked, I really had no interest in messing around with the customization. And so, what is your goal now as the Saints? Well, you're gonna need some criminal ventures, and so you need to invest some money to build these illicit businesses. And this is kind of where some of the political commentary comes into play. One of the first businesses is a toxic waste dump, but you're taking other toxic waste and disposing of it, quote unquote, humanely by stealing the toxic waste barrels from some other company. That doesn't even fucking make sense. Where's the money in that? I honestly didn't get this. Maybe I missed something, but this is just stupid. I guess it's an environmental message or some shit. And this activity is all over the map. I think there's 17 different instances where you have to find a random toxic waste truck and drive it to a destination without crashing into something. And you only get like 2,500 bucks out of this, I think, or something like that. The second one I did was insurance fraud, which is exactly the same as it was in Saints Row 3 and 4. It's still kind of fun, but it's just over the top and ridiculous. One of the marketing claims for this game when it was revealed is that they were going to dial back the craziness from Saints Row 3. That is absolutely not true at all. The only thing they've dialed back is the comedy by making it just not funny at all. This is still a very stupid and goofy game. When your adrenaline meter goes to full, you start flying through the air and every vehicle you touch explodes, which is, I think, how it worked in Saints Row 4. If not, this is actually even more ridiculous than Saints Row 4, so just put that into perspective. This is a serious Saints Row game, according to Volition now. That being said, it's probably the only fun side mission in the entire game. So what about the main missions during this section of the game? Well, you need to help each of your individual friends start up their end of the business, I guess. And I only did a handful of these before I quit the game out of sheer boredom and frustration, and honestly, I gave myself a time limit anyway. Who the fuck's gonna care about this game in a week? Nobody. So I might as well just put out this review shitting all over it, right? But I'll give you a couple notable missions here. One of them, you decide to help your friend Eli by LARPing in the middle of the desert. Yes, quite literally, live-action role-playing. And this has got to be at least the third time I've seen a video game do this. It's not funny or interesting anymore. At least Sunset Overdrive took the concept and actually made it its own faction. But it still wasn't funny, even in that game. And here's my problem with this LARPing bullshit. It's clearly Mad Max themed. It's very obvious, even though there's still a bit of a fantasy slant to it. At the very most, you could say it's Fallout level, right? It's a post-apocalyptic wasteland. So why the fuck are they speaking in medieval dialect? Do mine eyes deceive me? What brings Elijah the Wise to the land of Tapeworm? Seek ye to join with the Great Worm? This is the most tropey, generic, Design by committee shit I've ever seen. Have any of these people actually played a role-playing game? And if they have, I guarantee it was only Dungeons and Dragons. This is fucking stupid. Just think about it for two seconds. And so the whole gimmick of the mission is that you get non-lethal weapons. And this has got to be one of the only games in history where a crossbow shot to the head on normal difficulty is not a one-hit kill. Fix your goddamn game. And even though a decent amount of development time was clearly put into this, honestly, a lot of the story missions have a very cinematic feel to them. They still got lazy. There's only like two enemy models here, only one of which is female, and they're all fat chicks. So the exact same fat chick comes rushing at you like 50 times over the course of this mission. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Another stupid mission has you rescuing your buddy Kevin because he was out on his own and he gets kidnapped by the idols for betraying them. And this is basically three different missions rolled into one and it's like 20 minutes long. It starts off with a barroom brawl, which you can still use your special abilities, so I don't even know why they took away the ability to use your guns, when you can clearly still use grenades or sniper rifles or whatever as long as it's a special ability. 
Then you drag around a dude in a porta potty, which again is supposed to be funny, but the dialogue is so goddamn poorly written that it kills it completely. And this is a mechanic for this game. Clearly, they were inspired by Fast Five, where they drag around the vault by the car at the end. The mechanic is kind of buggy, and this whole game is pretty buggy, if I didn't make that clear. And actually, let me derail this once again for a short list of the bugs in this game, as I wrote down the most notable ones. Something you've definitely heard from other people is that this is very poorly optimized. I actually didn't have that many frame rate problems, but I definitely got a decent amount of pop in. Apparently, there's also several different ways to soft lock yourself in missions. I was actually given a document with my keys that detailed this, so they are known issues that Volition is going to fix, I guess. Like I just said, this whole wrecking ball mechanic doesn't really work. It definitely doesn't work against other vehicles. There was a couple times where I had invisible weapons, and a bunch of other times there's missing sound effects for those weapons or explosions. I got stuck in place exiting a car, and the only way I got free was from another car running me over. My controls got completely locked up, which happens later in this mission I'm talking about. And possibly the most egregious one, at least to me, is that money trucks, which are marked on the minimap, by the way, don't have money in them. I was actually so confused by this, I thought it was a vehicle that you're supposed to take to Jim Robs. Yes, they fucked up the rim jobs joke. But no, it's not that either. These are clearly supposed to be money trucks, but there's no fucking money. I don't know if it's a bug or if they forgot to put it in the game, but this pissed me off. Anyway, back to this mission. Then you go to the Santo Aleso sign and you gotta climb up it, disarm some bombs, shoot a bunch more guys. Then you free your buddy. Then you wingsuit to a party where the idols are at. Again, here's kind of the social commentary of the upper middle class anarchists who want to abolish capitalism, but clearly only exist because of capitalism. And then you shoot yet more guys. And the worst part about all of this is that this is where my game soft locked. And when I exited out of the game and restarted, it didn't save any of the fucking checkpoints. And I had to do the entire mission again. The worst part is, despite having like four distinct different sequences here, none of it is fun. You put all this work into making this mission distinct and just memorable enough that I could just state it off the top of my head without looking at my notes, but none of it was actually fun to play. That's the problem. And so what's the next Kevin mission? You have to help him get a fucking toy from Wendy's. Or, excuse me, FBs. Because as you saw, almost a year ago now, they censored freckle bitches to FBs, because I guess it would be offensive. And so, yes, you actually have to drive around to multiple freckle bitches to get this motherfucker a toy he couldn't get when he was nine years old. This is actual autism, dude. And I forgot to mention, Kevin is also bisexual. The game is sure to let you know that pretty early on. You know someone with like a 3D printer or something? I do, actually. Remember Teddy? Your ex? The guy with the ponytail? Other ex, Teddy. The woman with the mohawk? Does it add anything to his character? No. Not at all. And so, what's the conclusion of this mission? After killing a bunch more idols, he gets 500 of this limited edition toy and decides to give it away to orphanages because he grew up in an orphanage. Which is why he couldn't have a toy for himself. And your boss character, instead of having some kind of witty banter, you know, like male friends have, and yes, I understand you can make your character whatever gender or sexual orientation or whatever the fuck you want, but there's no goddamn banter. You just say, absolutely. Yes, I gave Giga Chad the southern man voice that it was the closest thing to a chad of the voice options and so this is about the time where my playthrough came to a close after doing over 20 side missions and hustles and this is also about a dozen story missions in even though i feel like the plot has barely begun at this point i can clearly tell this game has a shit ton of content but does that matter if it's all shit content no that has always been my argument for why I think Ubisoft games are subpar. Even though the gameplay, the core gameplay systems of Ubisoft games are at least decent. I don't know if I would say they're great or amazing, but they're at least fun to play for a while. How many people actually finished Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Fucking nobody, okay? 
I don't even believe whatever the hell the trophy data says, it's gotta be less than 10%. They're using bot accounts to prop that number up if it's above 10%. And the reason I bring up Ubisoft for the millionth time is because this is basically just a really shitty Ubisoft game. Now of course, previous Saints Row games weren't that much different. I'd say the core gameplay experience for this is still the same as Saints Row, it's just the worst possible version of that. The shooting sucks, the driving sucks, the side missions suck, the main missions suck, the characters suck, the humor sucks, everything sucks. There's absolutely nothing redeeming about this game. And it's all the most repetitive shit you have ever seen, dude. I promise you, please God, don't buy this game. I don't think I have to say that, because I think all of you knew this would be complete shit. But just in case you're holding out like, oh, am I going to get this on a deep, deep sale? Or fuck, even if you're going to pirate it, don't fucking do that either. It's not worth your time. I promise you, even as bad as gaming has gotten now, this is the worst game I've played this year easily. And definitely one of the worst I've played in the last five years. So final thoughts, don't play this fucking game. Please don't buy it. Don't rent it. Don't pirate it. It is shockingly bland. And the worst thing a video game can be is boring. If it was so bad it's good, like a Ride to Hell Retribution type of thing, it could be redeeming based on that factor alone. But no, it's awful. It's just completely awful. I guess we now finally know the answer to the question that nobody asked. What would happen if a development team entirely made of diversity hires tried to make a game? You get the new Saints Row. So I'll leave you with that. See you next time, guys. Can I not kill the bystanders? Yeah, I can't even kill the bystanders in a fucking Saints Row game. You better believe this is going in the review.